Oh God, I'm thirsty. Ah. Ow. Uh. Hi everyone, I'm Stormy, and this is the $60 Spirit of Halloween fursuit head. It's been the talk of furry Twitter with surprisingly positive reception. Yeah, it's not the sturdiest, nor is it the most glamorous thing in the world, but it's not that bad, right? I can't believe I'm saying this, but for a mass-produced $60 fox-moving mouth mask corporate fursuit head, this is actually kind of cute at least compared to the cat one, and do not look up the one on Amazon. <sighs> compared to a lot of those, or even the 2017 Maskimals, this is like light years ahead in terms of design. And for a mass-produced fursuit, it's very ambiguous. As in, there's no markings, no airbrushing, or anything particularly unique. It's just a fox moving mouth mask fursuit. It's not claiming to be anything that is in, in fact not. Which is good. Unfortunately, these mass-produced fursuits have a history of referencing stolen designs like EH Gate, but this one actually seems to be okay. But what makes this bean especially cute is not the design itself, but rather its imperfections, which quickly become apparent up close. Like the asymmetrical eyes, the jaw overbite, the random strands of uh, glue for some reason. What's interesting is these are qualities one might find with beginner suit makers. They were taking some weird notes for this. Like they tried to make it look authentic, but they were like, okay, we don't want this to look too good. When in reality, it probably has more to do with how it was slapped together in about 30 seconds. But as cute as this fursuit head appears, this is the toilet paper of fur. Now, don't get me wrong. From a distance, it's not the worst thing ever, but as soon as you look real close, um, the problems start to become apparent very quickly. No fursuit head should ever ball this much unless it's like 20 years old or made with questionable luxury shag. And this fur is way too thin. Closely shaven and overall feels rough, obviously built purely with profit in mind. It looks much like the fur you'd see on other $60 animal costumes, so really it's to be expected in this case. Although from the back of the head, it doesn't look like the worst thing I've seen. The fur backing on the ears actually looks okay, but um, looks can be deceiving. This feels very, very rough, but this actually looks okay. I'm not sure why they put the longer fur on the back. I really think they should have put some inner ear floof, but personal opinion, I guess. And they're floppy. I like that and I uh, don't like that. And while it does look the part mostly for a quote unquote fursuit, I do worry this will rapidly deteriorate after just a few years. If a fursuit head is built with Halloween costume materials, only designed to be worn once a year for a few years, it will eventually fall apart. One could possibly, however, refer this whole base with proper luxury shag, but considering the prices of fur nowadays, this would quickly turn into a $100 fursuit head. And that's just not in the spirit of Halloween. It's funny how despite this being a mass-produced costume, they did everything in their power to make it look handmade, right down to the faux 3D follow me eyes. Which, uh, uh, yeah, they ain't following me anywhere. They look like 3D follow me eyes, but only just. Which they totally could have done here, but it's like halfway they were like, and so long as it looks like a fursuit head, uh, who cares? Profit margin go brrrr. But in their defense, it does take actual skill to build them. Like seriously, 3D follow me eyes are one of the more difficult things to build for a fursuit head. Uh, shockingly, the eyes themselves actually feel quite durable. They're thick and are made of a soft, pliable jersey t-shirt material of some sort. They could probably take more pressure than conventional buckram for sure. Also, I love how they painted the highlights on the eyes themselves. Really going that extra mile for authenticity. The eyes are lined in a semi-circle shape, which, hmm, I don't know how to feel about that. There's also quite a bit of hot glue around the eyes themselves. They definitely did this in something of a hurry. Now, I'm sure this wasn't the original design and it probably got crushed in transit or whatever. But honestly, I think this little under overbite thing kind of adds to the charm. The moving jaw mechanism actually 
isn't the worst. It's got a fair bit of tension. So this is like the most off the shelf, realistic canine tongue and things you could possibly buy. It's not terrible if you ignore the upper jaw that's been glued in at a 45 degree angle for some reason. Evidently, this bean also had dental surgery. I know what that's like. And uh, that smells pretty bad. It smells like burned plastic, which uh, I guess is kind of a normal thing for soup making now that you think about it, but this is particularly strong. Who knew fox breath smelled like burned plastic? As far as the base is concerned, Dreamfishing Creations, this ain't. The base is really flexible and made of a very thin plastic. At a glance, I'd just say, you know, this is just a really thin moving jaw base, but it's one thing to look the part and another to actually show it. The base is really flexible, which is actually kind of normal for a lot of fursuit heads. Um, Stormy 1.0 actually has a bit of a flexible base. Some foam bases are a lot more flexible than others, but the problem with this base is that it is not made of foam, it is purely plastic, and you really don't want plastic bases to flex all that much because put enough pressure down, this thing is going to crack apart. Unfortunately, just like the fur, it is very, very thin. Now this base would probably last a little while if you take good extra care of it, but I feel like changes in temperature and the weather and the elements and whatnot, this thing is probably gonna crack after a few years. What I do like, however, is how they seem to have made the moving jaw mechanism uh, user serviceable using these uh, Phillips head screws. And if you look on the inside, you'll see that not only is the uh, top of the head actually foam padded, but so is the moving jaw. I was not expecting to see that on something that's meant to be disposable. So they actually built this with some comfort in mind. Totally took note after suit makers on this one, 100%. So while the padding in the suit is nice, unfortunately the staples holding the padding at the top, that's not so nice. I worry that this could get caught on someone's hair if you're not wearing a balaclava. And in general, just having exposed staples like that inside of a fursuit head where you're making contact with your actual head, I, I worry that that could cause some big problems. So despite how flimsy this thing may feel, they are trying to keep comfort in mind. And I do appreciate that fact. That being said, however, with the thinness of the base, if you do take extra good care of it, it'll probably last you a few years. But yeah, these ears and this mohawk, Sure does seem familiar. Very, very familiar. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Anyway, time to face the music and put this thing on. Oh my God, I- Oh, that's really tight. Oh, oh. Huh, interesting. Okay, so the uh, vision is way better than I expected, albeit it's not fantastic. There's also something weird in my eye. I hope it's not hot glue. <laughs> um, it smells like burned plastic. Oh my lord, it's, ooh. Do my ears flop? Uh, 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 I am Stormy the Gray Fox. Uh, oh god, I'm thirsty. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Uh, no, I've definitely marked this fursuit. <laughs> but the vision is actually not that bad. I can't believe I'm saying this. I can still read my script over there. There is kind of like this pink haze going on from the eyes themselves. Can we actually read? Sonic and Tails, team up. Super speed, Sonic's back in. Better than ever. Oh God, there's a weird resonance happening when I start talking. Like, I don't know how to describe this, but the, the head feels like it's physically vibrating when I talk. It's really weird, oh my God. Because there's like no foam or insulation, you can feel the whole head resonating when you talk. And again, the smell is pretty bad, but I can uh, see through the mouth somewhat. And first vision is so much better than I expected. That, I'm actually really impressed by that. For a $60 fursuit head, I could still see my surroundings. I could totally walk around at this, no problem. Wow. But comfort? Oh my God, this thing hurts. I feel like it's practically choking me. It's like pushing up against my chin uncomfortably. I, the sides are like stabbing into my temple. Uh, 
Yeah, if you get one of these, you definitely are gonna wanna add, add some extra foam padding because I feel like whatever they put up here doesn't really do anything. The jaw feels okay, but the sides and whatnot, it basically just feels like I'm being poked with plastic in every conceivable angle. Anyway, yeah, I'm honestly really shocked at how well they did this. <sighs> anyway, uh, oh God! Yeah. Wear a ball cloth, please. So let's be honest. This is a $60 mass-produced fursuit head. It's not gonna win any awards for build quality, durability, or longevity. It might last a few years at best, or under frequent wear, a few months at worst. It may not feel like a fursuit, but it sure looks like a fursuit, and it's covered in fur, so it technically counts as one. That being said, however, given how flimsy it feels and, and just how thin the fur is, $60 is still pretty steep. I'd expect a $25 animal costume to feel like this, uh, not a $60 one. And while we can poke fun and criticize the spirit of Halloween fursuit head all day, let's not forget the elephant in the room. Who is this fursuit aimed towards? Certainly not fursuiting veterans. Well, except for YouTubers like myself. But in the last decade, there's been a surge of interest pertaining to the furry fandom as a whole, and many of those people are, well, kids. The demographic that learns about the fandom through TikTok doesn't have a thousand dollars laying around, but a $60 fursuit head? Mom and dad might reconsider. I personally would rather spend the $60 towards building your own suit, but I understand that takes time, money, and experience. Plus, if you're brand new to the furry fandom or just curious, I don't think this is the worst investment in the world. But again, we are talking about a $60 fursuit head that probably won't last two years. So unless Spirit of Halloween keeps making these every year, you might want to keep other options open or perhaps get into suit making yourself. Stormate 1.0 was $800 when I commissioned them in 2016, which is a little over a grand in today's money. So these two are remotely comparable. However, this is an art piece made with love in a suit maker's bedroom, and this was made in a factory. You'll also probably start seeing these at future furry conventions, and I understand the concern with suit makers worrying about the impact on their businesses, but at least in its current state, I simply cannot see this replacing proper custom-made fursuits. It's a pre-made for starters, with two or three other designs, and unless Spirit of Halloween or some other conglomerate starts setting up custom suit making booths with automated airbrushing and whatever, this ain't gonna do a thing. Even so, the furry fandom is artist-powered, and the general consensus is that it's a way for younger furs to get their foot in the door or curious normies to experience the adventures of fursuiting. Nothing more. Plus, this isn't the first mass-produced fursuit. Need I mention DH8, Maskimals, certain Etsy sellers, all those fake fursuits on Amazon, AliExpress? What about those dino masks that actually ended up spawning a whole new sub-genre of custom fursuits? Who's to say the same thing won't happen here? My point is, don't lose sleep over this and let younger furs get to experience part of the fandom who may not be able to sew or afford a down payment. Gatekeeping is very silly. So as you know, this fursuit cost me $60, which came out of my own pocket. The average YouTube video doesn't make nearly enough in ad revenue to cover this, but if you'd like to see me cover more fandom oddities like this, consider supporting me on my Patreon or tapping that join button down below. Seriously, your support is what makes this content possible. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed my analysis on this gray fox oddity. If you found it helpful, like this video, let me know below, and subscribe. Y'all take care now. Bye!